Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to the final part of this tutorial series. So, as a recap, you um, to cover the recap for all four part, three parts. We've installed the program. Uh, we've got the basic grid layout. We've then uh, created, installed it, got the layout, put the cameras in, and put data in so simple way of getting data from the home center and into our interface we've created a button to run a scene we've also created a three extra buttons to run three extra scenes and then on this particular one it all it does is give us feedback so when something changes on the home center it actually reflects that change on our interface here and then we went on to the probably the hardest one where we're combining two different devices or sensor, well, devices really, from the home center into one icon or one space. So it's not only when we click it, it activates a device, but the visual feedback is a, a sensor feedback. So that's probably the hardest one out of everything. Um, and now we're left with just two left to do, which is the floodlights front and rear floodlights. So let's finish this part off and then I'm going to show you uh, another little thing. So shall we, uh, let's get started then. So what I've already done is I've already added the icons that we needed for flood on, flood off as before. So now what I'm going to do is highlight the grid and I'm going to put it in four rows again as I want to create the you know the, the little space here like we did here for our little labels and to make it easier so uh, label text put that into there and let's highlight that so that's going to be our front label background as per normal is going to be no color and foreground we're going to use as per normal yellow font size let's put the text in first and I'm just going to call this front as it's going to be obvious what it's for and I believe it was oh, not 40 let's move that to 20 so yeah 20 is fine and then we're going to do the text alignment to the center and the vertical alignment to center so that looks good happy with that and what I'm going to do is copy and paste. And I'm just going to call that uh, rear. And just change that to column one. So all of this now you should be very familiar with. Um, as this is what we've been doing for all the others to make it nice and easy and quick. So those are our labels sorted. So that's what it looks like. Very easy to do the labels. Okay, now we're going to be putting our text boxes in here. Um, sorry, image buttons. So let's click on image button one and let's move that to the front. And first thing we'll do is let's put it to full size and let's name it again. So this is our front flood. Background, as usual, no color. Um, we don't need foreground the image so let's put our default image in which is flood off and button type is a toggle because um, this is going to be an actual toggle switch so when we've pressed it the light is on and when we press it again as in let's use the proper words when we've checked it the light is on when we uncheck it the light is off so that's, that's the toggle. So we're happy with that because it's in the correct place. And so now we're gonna have two triggers. So first of all, the event trigger and collection, sorry, it's gonna be changed that to checked. And the collection we're gonna use is the front flood. So if I put that as front, yeah, front garden, front flood switch, 
and we're going to turn that on when it's checked. So it's checked and it's on. What I'll then do is I'm going to copy it again and paste it. But this time I'm going to select it as unchecked and then we're going to click on the collection icon and we're going to just change that to off. If you remember back in our other video, um, these are relay switches and they have the commands as on and off or value as on or off. So that's why we can just use them. So now what we have is we've got on and off. So when we click it, it goes on. When we click it again, it goes off. So that is when the button is pressed and when the button is released. However, we do also want to know is if we turn it on manually, or in my case, using a sensor, I want this button to be reflected, the fact that it's been turned on by an external factor. So we need to put what we call a data trigger in, just like before. So we click on that, click on data trigger, and what we're gonna bind it to, what we're gonna bind it to, you've guessed it, we're gonna bind it to the same switch. So front flood. So now we're gonna say, um, if the value of the front flood is on, then we want to change the image, don't we? Because when somebody turns it on, we want to show the image as with a value of on. So we're gonna change the image to flood on.png. Then we click on okay. So this flood is on. What we also want to do is we want this button to show as checked. So because if we press the button, if we press the button, it goes into the on position and check position. But all we're doing at the moment is just changing the icon from uh, off to on, but it's not actually doing anything to the button itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another property in and we're gonna say is checked to true. Oh, sorry, it's capitals. Is checked to true. All that means is then it'll know that this button's actually checked. So that means when I click it again, I only have to click it once for it to turn off the light, not twice. One to turn it on and then one to turn it off. So that's done there. I'm also now gonna do it again for the uh, opposite. So click there and we're gonna paste it. So we know we've got the garden front light. We're gonna change that to off. And once we're in the collection again, we just have to change this icon to flood off, making sure I've spelt it correctly. And on the setter, we're just gonna change that to false. So now when the light is off, we know this button is in the unchecked state and the light is showing us off. Okay, so that's done. So that is how an icon like this is completed. Uh, sorry, a switch like this or a device is completed. So if, you, uh, if you're if completing devices like these, on average, you should have four um, triggers, two events and two datas. The two event triggers are your triggers when you're physically you know, pressing the button and then pressing it again, so checking it and unchecking it. So it's like switching it on and switching it off. The data triggers are the information received back from the Fibaro. Um, whether it's in the on state or whether it's the on off state to help you update the icons and the check status. So now, because we're happy with that, uh, all we need to do is copy and paste. So see, nice and easy, nice and weird. So that's the good thing about this program as well. So we're gonna call that rear flood. And all we have to do is uh, just change the data points here because everything else we're happy with the the way it's laid out. Oh, um, we're happy with the way it's laid out. Um, if I click on that and change that to column one. Sorry, I almost forgot myself. So um, event trigger. So let's go into collection. That one. 
highlight it and it's rear flood. No, I call it back flood on mine. And switch. Okay. Saved. Let's do it again. Back flood. Back flood. Click on OK. So that's updated that. And the trigger on this one is again, it's back flood switch. The collection and everything will be exactly the same flood on, flood off, and it's checked is true and false, so we don't need to update that. And finally, this one change that to back flood switch saved. And there we have it all saved. So now those lights are now updated too. So uh, what I'll do is uh, just log in. And what we'll do is go on to this one, hit play. So that's what it looks like. And if I scroll down to my system, and I'm going to hit the uh, front flood. And I'm going to hit the front flood. Hit the rear flood. And hit the rear flood. So it updates. Perfect. Excellent. So there we have our simple single page um, system fully done. So now you can uh, expand this to make your own single page tablets. So whether you have devices, scenes, a sensor stroke switch device, I believe I'm hoping that I've covered all the different permutations. So you can all now start creating uh, everything yourself. So things like this one here, where if I click it, nothing happens. It doesn't do an action. But when um, when we set the alarm, so on, on, on my scenario, it's when I click the button to set, turn the alarm on, it turns the icon on. So you can't accidentally turn it on and off, you know, give a false alert, basically. Um, so that's that. So let me click on stop there for now. And so I'm hoping that everything is okay for you guys. And um, any questions, just send a, a message in the comment section. And um, now you can all start creating your own. Now, before I leave, I did say I was going to show you how to create the tabbed page systems. So what we're going to do for that is let's start from uh, let's start in uh, from the beginning again. In fact, um, and uh, let's crack on from there. So I'm going to click on File close and then um, file new so let's say it's an Android one again so here is our new page and new system so let's double click main page do exactly the same as before is groups visible false menu items add and the title is main oh it's a new page then we're going to call this again i'll just call it main but this time we're going to call it a tabbed page okay click on okay and okay so now if i click on main we've got two tabs here tab one and tab two Okay, so let me copy that one and let's paste it. So we've got a third tab, a fourth tab. So now we've got multiple tabs here. Okay, so let's rename this to say hallway and let's say kitchen. Let's say, oops, dining. Let's say 
outside. Okay. All four done. So now that we've got one, two, three, and four. Now what we'll do is we click on pages on the left side, right click, and we're going to say add page. And I'm going to call this hallway. Click on okay. And we're going to add another page called dining. And another page called outside. And oh. uh, kitchen. Have we done kitchen? Uh, dining, hallway, no kitchen. So right click, add page, kitchen. Right, so now let's go back on to main page. Hallway, kitchen, dining and outside. So, hallway, hallway, icon, if you want to set an icon, page, drop down list, and what we're going to do is it's going to be the kitchen. And if I can spell, so that page is the kitchen XAML file. No, it isn't. Hallway. hallway uh, I don't know then on the kitchen we'll do that the kitchen shall we add an icon yeah just add a, an icon and then we've got the dining to be honest with you I don't know what these icons do but I'm just guessing here at the moment so an outside outside and there's the outside so save that so now what we've got so save that as tab to go so now we've got our four different pages and then we click on play and there we have our four pages with our four different icons. Now, to edit a page, all we have to do is we then click on the relevant page, for example, dining, and we will just follow the same pattern like we did before. So we would then say, for example, create a grid, and say, for example, something like that, and let's just Ah, uh, I'll just put a label inside for now. And we're going to call that um, dining. And we'll say 40. Okay. And let's leave that there. Let's go on to hallway. Create a grid. Um, reset. Label. And let's I'll put that to 40 and call that dining uh, hallway. Let's go into the kitchen, double click, create a grid, and add a label. And we'll call that kitchen and outside where's the grid create a grid and let's make it bigger label and call that uh, what's that size 40 and we'll just call it outside so now that we've got our uh, outside kitchen hallway and dining so now if i click on the main page again hallway kitchen dining and outside as you can see now all those four pages are populated which means we can create so we leave the main alone because that's our primary page so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you what that looks like on my uh, on my phone so
If you give me one second, I'll log into my phone. Okay, so um, here is the new page that I've created. So here's my hallway. If I click on the kitchen, I've got my kitchen. Click on dining, I've got my dining. And then click on outside, I have my outside. So, and I can just swipe across like so, just by going left and right as well, by swiping. So that works as well. So that is what loads straight away on your phone. So if you have this as tablet set up, you can actually then create your multiple rooms and show everything in one go. So let me just go back to the desktop. So guys, there we have it. Um, follow the tutorials like we did for the single page and just do it basically as many times as you need to control to create your different pages here and the advantage is like I mentioned earlier on is that these are all compatible with any device so if you try and stick to these kind of like standardized widths and heights you shouldn't be far wrong in displaying these on pretty much any smartphone and if you go for a tablet version um, which is usually the width of, if you're doing it in landscape mode, 1024 by height of 768, then again, you won't be far wrong for any form of tablet, whether it's an iPad or whether it's um, Android-based tablets. The tutorial that I showed you um, on the first original video, that was um, a full-size iPad, but I've also got it displaying on an iPad mini because it uses the same base resolution. So it just uh, made it bigger. So um, like I said before, any questions, any thing to ask, feel free to send a message. And if you like all these videos, uh, please feel free to donate. And uh, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, like button and uh, also, don't forget the bell icon so you can be notified of any new videos. And um, good luck in uh, creating your own dashboards. So, I'll, I'll bid you farewell and we'll speak uh, next time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.